Gotcha. Okay. Uh, this is interview one. I'm, uh, my name is Mary Jane Wells. I'm the writer and performer of Heroin. And thank you very much for tuning in to our interview one. This is with um, Don Christensen, who is president of Protect Our Defenders, which is a fantastic organization that exists solely to advocate for the rights of rape survivors in the military in the US. Um, Don, you were also a retired colonel and a former military judge, presided over, I believe, at least 100 mil uh, trials in the military, of which I think it, were all 100 sexual assault trials? Or was no, that 100? No. no. Wide range of crimes. Um, so we're in the presence of greatness, and I really would love to ask Don a few, a, 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 you know, a good couple of questions because two of the questions that audience members often ask is firstly, how is Dana today? And secondly, if this happened to Dana today, what would be, what would happen to her? You know, during the play, you'll realize that she didn't report, which is the same case as many people in the military today, but Don is on the cold face of change about this and is the best person to ask all these sorts of questions and interrogate that theme. So without further ado, I'm gonna ask my questions. So Don, I've been following your progress with um, trying to make sure that these crimes are prosecuted properly, but what is different about this year in terms of change with regard to what you're doing? Well, <clears throat> yeah, this is a, a potentially momentous year uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, for the first time, Senator Gillibrand's legislation, and Senator Gillibrand has been the leading advocate for reform in the Senate, uh, has a filibuster proof uh, co-sponsors. She has over 66 people who have said that they will vote yes for that legislation, which is important uh, because of the American use of the filibuster, which requires 60 votes out of 100 in the Senate to get legislation passed. Uh, other things that have changed is the murder of Vanessa Gann uh, really highlighted issues in the military justice system and investigations, command climate. Uh, has brought a lot of attention to that and it has eroded the military's claim that they take uh, sexual harassment, sexual assault seriously and that they can prosecute cases. And then the last thing, President Biden uh, is the first American president who has spoken out about the need for reform. Gosh, I didn't know that Biden was the first president to do that. That's yeah. Gotcha. When you've been talking about, um, at, some of our audience will know who Vanessa Guillen is and some will not, but suffice to say, in terms of a cultural tipping point, she, unfortunately, her very tragic situation um, was that she was murdered on Fort Hood base in Texas last year, around April 22nd. And she's become, her name in some ways elevated the cause of military sexual trauma survivors in the same way that George Floyd did with race issues. I feel like, unfortunately, there's been too many martyrs to this cause. But I'm aware, Don, that you're dealing with legislation which is called the Military Justice Improvement and Increasing Prevention Act, but there's also a bill called the Vanessa Guillen Bill. Am no. I right in thinking that what you're doing is you are trying to make sure that within the military, these crimes are prosecuted properly using your legislation, whereas the Vanessa Guillen Bill is the one that that says, listen, we're going to take it out of the hands of the military completely and put felony crimes in civilian law courts. Have I got that wrong or is that right? Close. So uh, Senator Gillibrand's legislation, the Military Justice Improvement and Increase in Prevention Act, uh, would take all felonies other than military unique crimes like desertion out of the hands of commanders. Uh, under the military justice system, commanders, not prosecutors, make prosecution decisions and uh, give those to independent military prosecutors. Uh, the I am Vanessa Gein legislation right now would limit that to sex offenses, sexual harassment, sexual assault. And then it has other uh, reforms dealing with making sexual harassment a specific crime in the military improving the investigations of sexual harassment and a few other things that aren't in Senator Gillibrand's legislation. I see. Do these two things go hand in hand? Do they compete well, or they sort of help each other? They, they're, they have more in common than they don't. Uh, Senator Gillibrand and Representative Jackie Sear, who is the lead proponent in the House, you know, have committed to working together to make sure that the legislation both in the House version and the Senate version uh, match up 
Uh, I expect that they'll come together uh, uh, on the what I consider to be minor differences and get the legislation passed. Gotcha. Brilliant. Is um, the piece of legislation? I'm sorry. I'm, I want to. I want to make sure I get it right. The Military Justice Improvement and Increasing Prevention Act. Is it retroactive? Or once when it goes through in the Senate this year, will it mean that it's only if you report since that will your case go through in the right way? Well, it would uh, take into uh, its control all cases that hadn't gone to court yet or hadn't been through the investigation process yet. Okay. So the person has already been tried. Uh, that wouldn't be the accused has already been tried. That wouldn't fall on any system. Old cases could definitely be brought back. So if if somebody had uh, brought an allegation, say five years ago, and the military decides to do nothing with it, that survivor uh, could definitely try to get justice with under the new system. Oh, that's great. Okay. Um, so for somebody who hasn't ever reported, however, that's not something that they can. Uh, how, mm, that's a totally separate question, actually. Never mind about that one. Um, in terms of all branches of the military, is that equal for everybody? Does it include National Guard and also reserves? Well, it would include reserves. National Guard, uh, is, their justice system is controlled by their individual states. Uh, some of those uh, try to mirror what the active duty force does. Others have completely different processes. So it'll be up to the individual states to whether or not they follow suit. Gotcha. Um, in terms of when people say, oh, you know, there's, they make a correlation with civilian sex crime and they maybe say there's always bad apples wherever you go. Um, what do you think's wrong with statements like that in terms of how to really stamp out the whole culture of pervasive misogyny that propagates in the military? Yeah, well, one thing is a unique idea in the military is that the it's both your employer and the person and the institution responsible for holding people accountable. So if you're working for the private sector, obviously they're not prosecuting uh, your offender, whoever your employer is. But in the military, it's your employer it's also prosecuting. And so all this occurs in your work environment. Uh, and it's, it's not like in the civilian world where if you're working at Walmart and you're sexually assaulted, but completely unrelated uh, person downtown, you know, Walmart's not gonna be treating you differently and the prosecutor's gonna be dealing with that. But in the military, that's all together. So your commander who's deciding uh, whether or not to prosecute your offender is also your employer, also uh, potentially punishing you for for collateral misconduct or retaliation is a real problem. The other thing is that the military should be held to a higher standard uh, than what civilian population is. We say that all the time. <clears throat> that should come, cut across all facets of the military. And so the military should be setting the example and not saying, well, you know, it's just bad in the civilian world. And, th and then the third thing is, I think it's very dangerous to say, well, you know, we're no worse than the civilian system. Because what do you mean by the civilian system? In America, we have the federal system, the Department of Justice, and then each state has their system within the state, counties and cities often have their own criminal justice system. So you have hundreds and not thousands of different civilian systems in the United States prosecuting sexual assault and rape. So when you say, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> uh, you know, we're better than what a civilian case is, well, how do you know? Because there's so many different systems. Some are great, some are. Gotcha. I suppose that's also where potentially the Vanessa Guillen bill might come into difficulties. I know certain cases as well where somebody has reported to the civilian system and it's actually been worse. They felt that it's been handled. Like you say, it just varies completely depending on where you live and, you know, and who's in charge at wherever you report, doesn't it? Um, right, it does. It does. And, you know, we should be looking to the best of the processes to compare the military to not the average or the worst. Yes, right. Um, just one last question. In terms of uh, Vanessa Guillen's experience, 
of course, it was really heartening as a civilian to see that all the there was 14 people fired or suspended, which was um, a big signal, I think, that perhaps the military was willing to start to really take this seriously. However, I wasn't sure whether those people were actually fired or just moved, which made me think yeah. oh, a bit like the Catholic Church, just as there's a dodgy priest, let's just move him somewhere else. Um, I don't know if you can speak to that at all or shed any light on yeah. it. Well, the military uses the term fired in a different sense than what you would have in the civilian system where <laughs> now you're unemployed. Uh, that's not what it means in the, uh, when it's used that way in the military. Fired, <clears throat> fired just means they're removed from that position. They're still in the military. They're still getting pay. They still have their rank. They still could possibly be promoted. They could still be put in other positions of leadership uh, after the a spotlight uh, goes out on them. Wow. Uh, so uh, fired or relieved. Yeah, I mean, it's it's career damaging usually, but it doesn't mean that your career is over. Interesting, isn't it? Because actually the kind of retaliation a victim can get for reporting is really damaging and means you don't have any career left for a lot of people. But when right. it happens, very protected still, really, relatively speaking. Still on the payroll, anyway. Still on the payroll, and the, obviously the people at the very top are the ones that that are treated the uh, least severe. Gotcha. Well, thank you for all of your amazing work in this sphere, and thank you so much for giving your time and just giving us a little bit of today's relevance for the story that we're trying to tell. I really appreciate you. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Cool. Um, I'm going to press stop recording. Hold on. <laughs>